This here is another viewer's dirty gaming PC. I actually think dirty might be an understatement. It's been my goal with this season of PCDC to feature dirtier and dirtier systems over time. I want every new episode to feature a more disgusting rig than the last. That can be a bit difficult to organize logistically because I can only work with the submissions we've received. Speaking of, if you have a dirty system and you'd like a chance to have it deep clean for free in this playlist, be sure to submit a form linked in this video's description. I'm honestly dreading even disassembly of this system. There are what appear to be several different microbiome growing in here. There's a lot of, looks like cat or dog hair, especially near the top of the rig. You can tell that some of these fans have just been sucking it in and it hasn't been able to evacuate it. And so it's collected on things like the A-pin EPS, the exhaust fan, and atop the graphics card. A few of the things I noticed, aside from the obvious dust and grime, this graphics card is sagging quite massively. Should be sitting something like that there. But alas, it sags to, I believe, a degree or more from horizontal, which is Pretty appalling for a nicer NVIDIA RTX graphics card like this one. The power supply at the rear is also completely unattached to the chassis, which means it's just kind of dangling there. Not sure why. We'll take care of that later with the appropriate screws. And seeing as though this case has a white exterior, I think we're gonna do some manual scrubbing here. Apart from just using a water hose like we traditionally do in this series, there is some grime and goo that I don't think water alone is gonna get up unless I use something like a pressure washer. Not gonna do that because I don't wanna risk damaging any of the paint here. This stuff is gross. It should make for an epic transformation though, so I hope you'll stay with me. Star Forge Systems, like the one you're seeing here, come in all shapes, sizes, prices, and themes. Customize the PC that best suits you and let the experts at Starforge take it from there. Builds feature premium quality components, no different than what you or I might use in a custom build, and the attention to detail is excellent. Each Starforge PC is hand built in Austin, Texas, and ships with a full two year parts and labor warranty. They sport tasteful cable management, option swappable plate lights in their Voyager lineup, which I'm a huge fan of here, and some of the coolest licensed themes on the market, if I do say so myself, including Terraria, Dragonlight, and even old school RuneScape. If only these rigs actually improved my mouse skills, which, uh, yeah, are quite lacking. Nothing quite like Borkot staring at me from inside my PC while it absolutely destroys me in game. There's something sick and twisted about that. Look, the truth is there are tons of builds, themes, and components to choose from at StarForgeSystems.com, including the latest and greatest graphics cards. So be sure to click the link below and pay them a visit today. Hello there, and welcome to PCDC, personal computer deep cleaning. In this playlist, we attempt to completely disinfect and deep clean computers like this one. We wanna make these look as close to brand new as possible. That might prove challenging here, but I will give it my best shot. The fact that you guys watch these videos is how we can make money. I mean, we, we have sponsors and things. That helps us out on the back end, and so we don't charge anything for the labor that goes into this. Sometimes we even upgrade things along the way. Although I think this rig is already spec'd nicely as it is. It has a Core i9 9900K, an RTX 3080, a 1000 watt revolution power supply, of course a Z390 motherboard from MSI, and a few NVMEs. The case looks to be a lean, lean, little, is it a land cool? 205 or something like that. It, it's a Lee and Lee case, pretty nice. I actually really like these. You can see it's got this uh, little side panel along the basement for easy access for your three and a half inch drives and whatnot, uh, but it, it, this reveals even more dirt and grime. <laughs> Most of it tends to settle downward, right? Thanks to gravity. And so, especially along the bottom side of this case, it is just gross. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if things were living in here. In general, just routinely dusting a rig every so often should prevent this from happening. And I can tell you at this point, the way this one looks, there is no way that simply using a can of air, even compressed air from an industrial compressor, is going to solve this problem. You could blast air at this all day and it's not gonna remove the sticky gummy grime. So I think by this point, you've got a good idea of where we're starting. I hope the B-roll has uh, served its purpose. And without further ado, let's get this thing downstairs to disassemble. What an epic transformation this one turned out to be. I am excited to show you all how well this went, but also to reveal some of the issues encountered along the way. This assembly ended up revealing more gunk and uh, yeah, whatever the heck some of this stuff is than I initially thought.
To kick things off, I gave the stripped down chassis a thorough bath along with other bits and pieces in between. Water is your friend here, just make sure to thoroughly dry immediately after to prevent water spots and component damage. Here's one for you. Yep, all water and manual scrubbing. What a difference it can make. Now this is where I began noticing more of the brownish gunk that proved extremely difficult to remove with isopropyl alcohol alone. In fact, this forced me to eventually resort to something different I'll discuss later. These front filters, for example, had tons of spots that proved very stubborn and required several minutes of scrubbing each to get them looking close to brand new. Of course, we can't forget about cleaning our screws, isopropyl and a brush should do the trick. Now it's time for the platform. Much of what I do here is self-explanatory, but this, yeah, this gives you an idea of just how much dust we're dealing with. With the motherboard stripped of its components, we can go a step further by removing heat spreaders and other plastic and metal bits for a thorough board cleaning. Next up is my favorite part, fan cleanings. Yeah, most of my recurring viewers know that that was 100% sarcasm. I dread this part, if I'm being honest. Fans are delicate, intricate, and dust magnets, and there's so much grime built up in these that I ended up actually spending about an hour on each. And you know, do the math, right? That's uh, four or five hours of just fan cleanings. That's not including the graphics card fans, by the way. And uh, we're just gonna kind of speed through these. Again, most of this is self-explanatory. Just mind the pressure you apply to each of these fan blades, don't overspool any of them, and try to keep liquids out of the bearings. The graphics card is up next. This one was a bit large and required full disassembly, nothing we haven't tackled before here, though as you'll see shortly, some extra tricks were required.
After quickly realizing that air, IPA, and manual scrubbing weren't enough to remove these gooey stains atop the backplate, I resorted to something I've never used in this playlist before, Glue Gone. So this stuff is super strong, comes in many different names, many different brands, Goo Gone, etc. But when used meticulously, can make a huge difference on certain surfaces. I want to stress the word certain there. Just let it soak in a bit and watch as sticky grime wipes clean away. The end result isn't perfect. I could have spent even more time here, but this is much better than where we started. And if I'm being honest, I didn't want to risk the glue gun eating into any of the white labeling since it's front and center when the card is installed. And this is again, the first time I've ever worked with this product around electronics. A few other things to check off our list, this additional PCIe card, a quick dusting to the trick here, along with a finishing wipe down with alcohol. And we can't forget about this power supply, which was disgusting, by the way. I don't take these fully apart for reasons I've discussed in previous PCDC videos, but there was plenty to keep me occupied around the enclosure and across its modular cables. I don't want to say what this looks like, but I'm pretty sure we're all thinking the same thing. But look, the truth is, as frustrating as this was to clean, bringing it all back to life was extremely rewarding, and I can't wait for you to see it all come together. Well, 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 you probably noticed that I've changed attire several times throughout uh, the previous clips, and that is because uh, over the course of several days, I had been tackling different parts of this rig, some stuff you didn't see on camera, including the removal of extra gunk on especially the top of the motherboard. Some of it is still here, and it's because I'm not entirely confident in the glue gone's ability to not damage uh, SMDs in particular. I just don't want to risk anything. I'd rather keep that there uh, rather than uh, risk damaging the board. Uh, so I've done my best to clean up pretty much everything else. I think the rig is going to look so much better now, close to new, not quite, because there's some scuffs and things that we obviously can't do anything about, especially on the case. Uh, but I'm excited to see how it all looks when it's back in the chassis. I just think it's important I'd be honest and transparent with you about the limitations of a deep cleaning like this. I'm not a miracle worker. I obviously can't get rid of scratches. Those will still be here, and I'm not going to try to hide those on camera. But if you do wait long enough to clean your rig, uh, eventually you will have that, that grime and goo in places that uh, can prove difficult to access, and uh, the chemicals that I had to resort to to get rid of it in other places, I'm just not comfortable using on sites like uh, the motherboard shroud and SMDs. We're gonna gently drop this platform back into place. Now I have several screws that I'll be replacing in this rig. He was also missing some screws fastening the motherboard to the chassis. And of course the power supply was completely unattached, so we'll take care of that as well. In terms of cable management complexity, this is actually a simple build since we don't have any RGB. So I'm just gonna take care of most of this before we get the power supply situated. Now just as an example, for those who think that I'm like over exaggerating and sort of making this a spectacle, the fact that we're having to properly deep clean this instead of just blast it with air. Greg, why don't you just use compressed air? That would get rid of all your problems. This here is a prime example of why that is not the case, my friends. So I've got a, uh, a towel here with isopropyl alcohol soaked into it. And you can see, even with heavy manual scrubbing, yeah, that stain, that stain ain't coming out. <laughs> and I've actually been at this for a few minutes prior to even filming this clip. So uh, it's it's in there. And this is why I've had to resort to that uh, glue gone. It's uh, just, uh, you need something a little more aggressive. And I don't usually run into situations like this. So uh, if you see excess cleaning, it looks like it's over the top. I can assure you it is not. And this is another reason why you don't want to have rigs like these go uncleaned for as long as this one has. Power supply is going in now, fan side down, since we do have ventilation along the bottom of the case. Also make sure this is torqued down this time with the 632 Phillips screws. Most things now wired up, including the 24 pin. And I've got to say, thanks to all of these panels, things are going to clean up very nicely along the right side. Squeeze that 
8 pin EPS up there. Gonna cover up behind the motherboard with this panel. Another thumb screw. Also, I've noticed the owner has uh, neglected to install SATA power for his power supply. So this uh, one SATA power cable running to the RGB in his case will be unpowered. So when we power the system up, we won't see LEDs illuminated. I'm gonna talk to him about that. Might have been intentional. I just know that I don't have the cable here. It wasn't given to me with the build. This looks so much better now. I just noticed that I've got a little bit of a stain there that was not removed with water. Isopropyl, is it gonna come up? Ah, hope another one of these super, super stuck on ones. Eight hours later. Finishing touches will be our PCI devices. You know, I just noticed that uh, this card here, in order for it to have full slot connectivity, it's gonna have to sit a bit higher. What was it? I don't know if it was here originally. It could actually fit in smaller slots because of the way that it's indented, but I wanna put it in a full length slot. This is a, yeah, this is an eight lane slot here. So I'll talk to the owner about that. The only problem is with that in that position, it's gonna put it quite close to this graphics card, which I'm not a huge fan of. It won't be the end of the world. I'll let him decide on that one. Let's get these torched down. We're also missing a few PCIe slot covers. Of course, I don't have extras of these laying around because these are case specific and I can only work with what I've been given. Now the graphics card sag is indeed strong with this one. So let's search for a bracket. I've actually got this Asus tough one conveniently, the same, uh, brand as his graphics card. So we can extend this to sort of whatever height we need and then tighten it with this thumb screw here. And it's also magnetic, so that's convenient. Just need to get it to the right height. So I'll lower this just a tad. Don't want to bend the card too hard in one direction. Let's see if that there does it. Ah, yes, that looks so much better. And when it's all said and done, I think it's turned out pretty great. Now it's not perfect. Again, I, I don't want to act like this is the perfect end all be all restoration back to new, back to original out of the box condition. I can't get rid of scratches. Some of the staining in sensitive places I also can't comfortably get rid of, but I think this rig has come a very long way. I mean, just look at the top side of the motherboard. I mean, this was an area that was in infested with hair, gunk, goo, and who knows what else, and it looks so much better now. The cabling is no longer growing its own fur. Same goes for lower places in this build, including the basement. This door area was completely infested. It is in much better shape now. The graphics card cleaned up nicely, as did the CPU cooler. You'll also notice that I moved all three case fans to the front of the chassis for more optimal intake, so we don't have a dedicated exhaust any longer, uh, but the beefiness of this Be Quiet, I think it's a Dark Rock, 4, Dark Rock Pro 4. Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, we have two fans in there actively exhausting air, so to speak, out the rear grill here. It's pretty much doing the job of what a fan already would. Uh, and that's why I moved the other three to the front for a more uniform look. If the viewer doesn't like it at the end of the day, you could always change it, it won't take very long. The last thing to do then is to attempt to power it on. Now, I did check uh, to verify that this case, uh, the build rather, worked ahead of time. I don't like turning these on when they're dirty in the office for obvious reasons. So I tested this outside in a very rudimentary way and that's why it wasn't on camera. Let's make sure that it still posts. So it has fired up again. Remember, we're not gonna have RGB uh, for the case lit up because we're missing that power cable. I've got our portable monitor here and it looks like there we are we have a post. Also, yes, I did notice the uh, CPU cooler fans, both of them actually were not spinning. I've swapped headers. I think the other header is disabled in the BIOS and that has fixed this problem. As usual, this took a ton of hard work. And again, I wanna stress, I know I've said this several times before in this playlist, but it's important that folks know, especially if they're new to this scene, that cleaning your rig every few months or so, depending on its environment, will spare you the hassle of having to do what we did here. And you, you saw, it doesn't fix everything by that point when you have this hard stuck on grime, some of it will not come out without serious chemicals, which could risk harming the paint, especially if you have a white chassis like this one, uh, you could harm SMDs on a circuit board. It's just, uh, you, you start playing with fire, so to speak. Uh, so just routine maintenance, routine cleaning, just taking a can of air and just dusting it out every month or two, 
that is all it takes to prevent something like this from happening again. That said, this did clean up very nicely. I'm glad we put in the effort because I expect this rig will have several more years of life left in it, considering most of these components are relatively modern. Now, if you or someone you know has a very disgusting PC, something like this or worse, and you'd like a chance to have it deep clean for free in this playlist, be sure to submit a form linked at the top of this video's description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. It's why we can continue doing this for free in the Orlando, Florida area. I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for cleaning with me.